Hello guys, today I have a 98 Acura CL with a 3.0 liter engine. I have worked on this car yesterday and day before and um, I filmed a whole bunch of stuff that I, what I was doing to diagnose this car and I think it's going to make the video way too long so I'm just going to give you a little bit of uh, history of this car and I'll tell you right away we have injector problem. Okay, unique problem. I have done a uh, uh, secondary ignition waveforms and I think the video will be way too long. So I'm going to include some of the videos that I've done yesterday, some of the tests. So <clears throat> this is what's going on here. This car was bought by a friend who works with me. He bought it a couple months ago with the misfire. It was it was obvious misfire. He, the uh, owner of the car, didn't know what was going on, so couldn't tell him. They said it, it's uh, it has a misfire, has a check engine light on, it's flashing. But it was like he just want to get rid of it. He's just gonna give him a good price, and a uh, friend of mine bought it. He took that car to a shop that worked on it, and uh, they've done some good work. They had checked a. Uh, compression on we have a misfire on number six on cylinder number six so compression was 150 psi which is in spec they've checked a fuel pressure which is in spec they've checked a fuel pressure regulator that was fine they checked the EGR valve that was okay they have replaced injector on cylinder number six and uh, <clears throat> they think they did some kind of cleaning process on the intake and uh, they, they also checked injector pulse on the injector number six they I believe checked on the ohm the control wire from injector to a power control module and at that point they were they were pretty much giving up on the car still have a distinct misfire number six car is running pretty rich you can actually smell you know it's pretty rich and uh, so they're they've told him you know this is all we could do the only other thing they could be they would they would proceed is to this being a Honda engine they wanted to do a valve adjustment and uh, at that time I said well let's just stop right there let's see if I can take a look at it and I said I'm not guaranteed I'm gonna be able to find a problem it's something that's not it's it's something that's uncommon if these guys couldn't figure it out so anyway I got the car and um, it is interesting problem on this on this car so I'm gonna start the car for you guys we'll do a quick power balance test I'm just gonna pull my spark plug wires and we'll see the number six is misfiring and I think I'm going to skip all the stuff that I was doing. It's just way too long. The only, the only um, codes we have is uh, random misfire P0300 and uh, we have 306 and 301. So the number one, so the number six. Number number one is fine, but we still have a misfire number six. And then uh, I think after that, I'm just going to go straight to injector and we will go through and uh, and see what what's what I have found and what I think that the problem is I'm, I'm confident that I have found the problem it's really tough it's crazy so uh, let's get to the engine I'm gonna start the car and uh, let's just go to power balance this real quick to confirm that we have issue on a number six and they will go from there so basically this is uh, let's see uh, this is number six, five, and four, and then one, two, and three. So let's start it up, and I'll show you guys what the deal is. So I can find my keys. Okay, I'm gonna unplug this one. 
we can say we have a engine exchanging RPM. Same with this one. Number six, we got nothing. I can I can feel the spark on it, but nothing. Okay. And uh, other threes are okay. One, two, and three are fine. I'll get you guys to uh, tailpipe actually. That's what it looks like. Gonna, yeah. Okay. Okay. So guys, you can see it's running pretty rich, and um, fuel trim is elevated. I will put the fuel trim in this video, just include it real quick, and, uh, and the trouble codes and all that. So before I continue with this video, I want to tell you that this is a problem where without the scope, it would be absolutely impossible to find it. And that's where these guys were struggling so much. I can only imagine what these guys are going through. Well, we're going through trying to figure out what the problem is. And uh, being, being uh, focused on injector number six, okay? I have used stethoscope. That was my, when I talked to him, to my, to my friend, and he said they replaced injector. So I was thinking maybe, maybe they could not figure out the circuitry and uh, they replaced the injector, but the injector still doesn't fire. So the first thing I've done, I took the stethoscope and I put my stethoscope onto my fr front injectors and uh, number six was working fine. I could hear the injector firing. I said, okay, well, it's not injector, something else is going on. So I, was, I went through some other tests. I even did, uh, I done the uh, <coughs> uh, power, um, relative compression test, actually show a little bit of a difference on one cylinder. I did it with a picoscope. I may actually include it as well, I don't know. And, um, uh, but that's because of the cylinder wash down. It's just so much fuel is piling into this cylinder. So the first test, of course, the data scope, as I said, we can use a stethoscope. You, you, thought, you, you go onto on the injector, it, you, can, you can hear the injector working, so that would, that would pass. The second, we can check power and ground. We can check the power side. There is no voltage drop on the power side. And I, should say, I shouldn't say that because some of you guys, when you see the waveform, you will think it's the power side. There is no voltage drop on the power side. We can, I also show by putting a, a noid light on it. I know the noid light doesn't, doesn't draw as much current as, as injector, but you would look for, for pulse from the power control module, injector pulse. Works great. That that thing f flies like like I mean flickers just as it should, and you guys will see that. Um, so I'm thinking, what else? If, no, uh, if we would do a injector balance test with external tool like you know something like this, it would pass as well. So every single test that could be done on this injector on this circuit without a scope, we would, would, would pass with no problems at all. And with a, even with a scope, it was very confusing to me to find out. I didn't, didn't understand what I'm, what I'm looking at it the first time. So what I've done, actually, I sent some of these images to my friends that I, Robert and, and uh, Mike Salazar, uh, and I talked to these guys, they're pretty smart, and they were kind of stunned as well. So, they were kind of mutual conclusion, you know, what are we seeing? And later on, they actually suggested a couple more tests, a couple more tests to be done to, to get to the to, to final conclusion. And there will be a part two of this video for sure. So, I just want to kind of give you guys heads up what's happening here. I had made the video that all the clips that I've been doing is way too long. So let's get to a, uh, uh, let's see our scan tool and uh, see the fuel trim and then, then we'll go to, a, to, to the fuel injector. Uh, the car has, I think, 114, 115,000 miles. It's pretty, it's a pretty good shape. <coughs> okay, so uh, we have four, five, six, and that's because I was unplugging my um, uh, uh, the uh, 
my mass power plug wires and the uh, random uh, misfire. So that's about it. I was expecting actually more because I was uh, unplugging the um, uh, coils and stuff. Uh, so let's go to the current data. So I'm just going to look at the fuel trim, just kind of give us a little bit of a. Let me start the car. Okay. Let's go with custom. Now this car, unfortunately, uh, it is a of course V6 engine, but has only one oxygen sensor, and that's kind of makes it more difficult because we cannot distinct, you know, we cannot figure out if you have a problem on one bank or it just basically give us a uh, uh, so you show it down. It would be nice to have two oxygen sensors so we can see what is going on. So uh, you can see that the uh, we're still in the open loop. Looks like, of course, you want to see the loop status. Right now in closed loop, we are taking a fuel away, but my uh, oxygen sensor, it is, uh, it's pegged actually rich, kind of, uh, it's, it's, it's around 580, it's, it's rich. And uh, downstream as well is, is rich, both of them. So, but now it's it's in a closed loop, but it's not taking. Uh, I mean, it's not taking much fuel away at all. You would think with the with the O2 sensors like this, it should it should do more correction, but it but it doesn't really. I mean, you can see now it went up a little bit, but you don't. Now it's actually an open loop, and it's pretty much stays stays rich. Now we're okay. Now we're taking away, taking fuel away at 27 percent. So we are now it's in a control actually, but we are really really rich. This is actually uh, this is pretty good. Now so this gives us a little bit of I mean of direction. I can actually smell the fuel as well. So it is uh, really. I mean now it's it is in a, in a control a little bit, but it's just uh, way way too rich. Even though now my my downstream downstream is now it's a little on the lean side, but it at least is able to to a uh, control the fuel trim now. But it's. Uh, I can't, I just find a long term fuel stream, I don't know. But this is, you know, enough evidence to me that, you know, we are running on the, on the rich side. It's kind of interesting now that I'm, I'm really lean on the, on the bank too. But we are, my oxygen, oxygen sensor is working now, so. Now are we taking too much fuel away? But with a, single cylinder misfire, you know, it's kind of a question, of course. Now it's going back up a little bit. Okay, so, uh, well, actually, uh, anyway, my, my O2 sensors are working. We are in, a, we have a rich condition for sure. Also, how I did not have a, 
Oh, there's a long-term fuel chain. Yeah, really. Yeah, it's the end. Okay. The long term is at zero. The short term is minus 27. So, no, the O2 sensor is it's working. So, this tells me we do have a um, rich condition for sure. Okay. Well, I got my <coughs> picoscope hooked up to all these front fuel injectors. I'm just gonna I'm I'm hooked I'm hooked up to my uh, control wires and uh, <clears throat> I'll get you guys on the, on the screen and see uh, what we got. Okay. okay so two in a millisecond. This should be from, okay for now. So let's let's start it up. Okay, so this is what I have, guys. There's my <clears throat> this is uh this is pretty weird, actually. Let me uh, let me stop stop this real quick, and then. Uh, I'm really confused to be honest. So this is my uh, number five and number four. This is one in the middle. This is one on the passenger side. So this is our problem. And uh, so injector has been replaced. And uh, so right now <clears throat> I do not have, this is my, of course you can see my, my turn on time. That looks nice and, and crisp. But it, I don't have a inductive spike, and uh, so what I what I did also I would I took like stethoscope just to listen all my injectors and they all they all firing I mean I I can hear each injectors you know opening and closing, even though now we can see that my number six is something's going on there. So first my first thought was it stuck open fuel injector and but the first thing that we can see here is that my injector pulse is just enormous uh, like on this one it's around uh, like uh, four four milliseconds okay I'm gonna lock this now I go to my cylinder number and it's pretty much the same on the it will be four yeah, that's number four. So that is number five. But now we go to number number six, and it's just, I mean, we're stretching from here to here, and it's like 20, 20 milliseconds. Now, it what bothers me here, you know, every time I. I Last night I went through every single YouTube video with Scanner Daner or, or James Daner or other guys that had a uh, stuck open or closed fuel injector and uh, every single one had a nice turn off time. I had never seen one that has this slope. So it seems like it seems like right in here let me just turn it down just a little bit. When I let's see if I can <clears throat> It's almost, it's trying to, let's see here, come on now, what am I doing? Sorry guys, I'm back. Ah, never mind, I'm trying to kind of stretch it up, but I don't know what I'm doing. Anyway, it, it, it seems like it's, it's trying to, to turn off this injector but it just takes so much longer like it starts of course here it's at, and it's turn on it's nice and crisp I mean just go straight down but it seems like some like from here it would be like almost 13 milliseconds it just takes so much more time 
to to turn off this thing. I just cannot see right there. This is what I'm trying to. If if I zoom in, I'm gonna lose this. I cannot. There you go, this is what I want. Okay, so let's go put a little bit of filter here. So it's actually kind of right in here. It's trying to turn off the circuit, but it can't. That's at 10 milliseconds, and it it um, and of course it just kind of kind of bleeds. That, that there is, I think there is. I don't have any inductive. Spiky is just kind of bleeds. It takes so long to to turn it off, and it slowly bleeds to ground. So it's almost like from here. It almost like takes like a 16 milliseconds to completely turn off the circuit, and uh, it is really weird. I mean, I have never never seen this before. See so right there. You see that? It's almost like it's like here, and it's starting to to slowly slope up to, to turn off it's like almost like now 20 milliseconds I know I mean it's just kind of hard to see it but now when the other one has let's just go to like four milliseconds like the, what the other ones are so they'll be like here so definitely it's keeping it longer anyway but then it just very slowly started starts to uh, turn off the injector so I, I know I mean it, it's just uh, now the question is you know is it short to, do I have a control wire short to ground I don't think I do because we clearly have a control uh, short to ground would be you know maybe partially short to ground so I will check that what I'm going to do I'm going to disconnect the power control module I'm going to disconnect the, the uh, uh, injector I'm going to all on my control wire to make sure that I don't have uh, anything you know touching my wire but this is something really weird uh, so anyhow so last night what I've done actually I did a uh, so my next step was let, let's check the uh, my cam sensors okay camshaft sensor this one has actually two sensors There's a, they call it top dead center one and top dead center two so I got them here uh, so let's do this uh, just wanted to see if there anything are you know kind of goofy with with a signal from my from my from my um, camshaft sensor and uh, honestly I really couldn't see anything wrong so come on sorry guys it's so cold today okay so what I what I have here is this is the current that I've got from my uh, the uh, I got the uh, fuse out of fuse box. The problem with this is that actually it seems like it feeds the fuel pump as well. And uh, but I will kind of uh, put some more filter in it, give us a little bit more. So let's go. now here's my here's my. Um, Camshaft, camshaft sensor that this one looks okay this is number one and uh, I'm going to put a little filter as well so that that looks that looks fine and here's my um, current ramps and uh, this is my number six injector and you can see how long that current is but the current is actually the peaks are the same uh, it's like uh, it's 110 millivolts with 1.1 amp, so it it it's not spiking or anything. My current is fine, so and we can see now, you know, it correspond with all these firing events just uh, the same on each injector every time. It's just the fact that this one is open a lot longer, and of course, and uh, we can actually see my. I'm try if I can make you zoom this in. I know that the trouble is. The trouble is that my fuel pump is on this circuit, so you can see all this. But actually, you can see the slope here from my. Uh, I kind of see it here as well. So, uh, but there's a, a bigger slope here on my current, as 
because of that of that turn off time that's so long. So um, there is a slightly higher amperage on this, but not not really noticeable. I mean, it's it's like a it's like a 120 amps or something like. That. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, it's trying to, so let's see, uh, 1.1 and so one point. It's like a, yeah, that's just really very slight difference in the amperage. So, so like point point one amp or something like that. That's just nothing. So, um, so I don't know. I mean, it, it's really this is really interesting. And my my camshaft is fine. Camshaft sensor is okay. I have no glitches on it. But this is this happens every single time. Uh, I also do have a. Uh, I'm sure if I can do I save the. Uh, I have it somewhere. There you go. This is the uh, number two uh, <coughs> camshaft sensor, <coughs> and I just wanted to rule that out to make sure I don't have anything goofy, you know, stupid going on with the sensors. But that's that's not the case. And uh, now it's just in a, in a different position here, but there's still no problem there at all. I'm just gonna turn a little bit more, and. Uh, So this looks fine. I uh, got no problems on my on my. And we can see now this one is actually at a different different position, of course. But this looks okay. And nothing out of ordinary. I mean, we can go through the, all the buffer, but uh, there's nothing wrong with this sensor. So uh, okay. So let's move on now. So what to do next? So my uh, thought process was let's do this with, en with the engine cranking. You know, let's just do the same thing to see if this this turn off time happens during the cranking. So I'm I'm just trying to find you know some kind of sense in this, which. I gotta go back to my. Attenuators. And of course, I mean this still, you know, because it's it's a new new injector doesn't mean a good injector, but we'll we'll go through that as well. So I'm just gonna unplug my my coil again and uh do the cranking test next. my other channel. I think I pulled my wire. It doesn't matter. It's okay. But anyway, you can see still the same. I'm not sure. Oh, I didn't, I didn't have it on. I'm sorry, guys. But that, that's okay. I mean, we can still see that I'm still having the same the same problem. My off, when the injector is supposed to turn off, I'm still having the same during the cranking as well. So I'm thinking maybe, you know, of course, some kind of, uh, you know, current limiting I know some of you guys gonna look at this and say, "Wait, dude, this is what you got." But I, I just, I, you know, I don't know. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do next, I'm going to unplug my. I want to oscillate my my injector. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to unplug my injector, and I'm just going to put the noid light in, and uh, I'm going to connect the noid light scope, and I just want to see this, you know, if it's going to happen with the noid light. I know the noise light is not going to draw any current, but I don't care. I just want to see nice, crisp on and off time. All right. 
So now, uh, the question is, of course, do we have a drop on our feed side? Well, uh, I've done, you guys could see, my, my current ramp. So each injector is pulling one amp of current, so that tells me that I do not have a drop on my on my uh, feed side. We can do that, but I'll check it so that that's okay. Uh, and if I would, of course, if I would have my... on. Uh, because we don't have any spike here, you know, you would think that we would have a problem with uh, with the uh, feed. But by looking at the current, that's out of question. I do have a good good feed, so there's no there's no voltage drop on my on my on my feed side. It's something else I also captured. <clears throat> looking at the waveform, I was wondering: is is possible that pulse on this injector it never changes is is, is it only stuck at 10 or 10 or I was 20 millivolts so this is the the wide open throttle test with a uh, front injectors and um, we can see here that you know this is a wide open throttle this is a fuel cutoff and the blue trace is my cylinder number 6 and it's working you can see it right off, right here it's it's off uh, the other two are off as well and uh, when we zoom in, we can see that this this transistor is actually responding. It is working. The computer is able to control it, the, the pulse width on this uh, injector pulse on this on this injector. I mean, it it follows the uh, the other ones. It's just it's just twice as long. And of course, this this ground side is just slope like that. So uh, I think this is a very important piece of evidence to see that actually as we go closer here you can see the spike is a little bit higher uh, this is at uh, right before before the cylinder shut down and uh, we can measure just go from, to, from peak to peak actually I go from here, here's fine So right here we have a 24.4 milliseconds, and uh, let's move it here. You can see now this pulse width is it's longer, and we can see on the other injectors as the pulse width is changing, this is this is longer, and then it, it goes shorter and shorter until it's completely off. And it you know my my number six injector driver it is it is you know it's working but it's just not you can see it here and clearly it's actually it follows all the other injectors it's just not it's just not working right so uh, I just that's I just want to show you guys that and that was my that was my uh, so this is like for 24 let's see what's here to the peak it's 42 and on this injector so being forward is supposed to be should be 24 so that's something else I wanted to make sure you know is this in is this driver just has one in one pulse or does it does it does it change as we as we as the load changes on the engine and it, and it does you can see that okay okay a little bit of changing plan before I before I go to noise light um, I'm gonna have I'm gonna back probe my uh, control wire again. I'm gonna back probe the feed wire as well. I'm gonna show you guys my, my feed, but also I wanna put a uh, microphone on my computer. I'm gonna put my Steelman microphone on it, and we're gonna have that on a, on oscilloscope as well. And uh, let's see to make sure that we can hear you know injector opening and closing, and that would uh, that would be the next one. So I'm just I'm just trying to get as much data as I can to uh, get some conclusion. So I'm, I'm just putting my, my microphone right on top of my on my injector, and uh, I'm gonna to I'm going to be a hooked up in my uh, <coughs> right in here. I have my uh, sorry Steelman hooked up to my to my scope, and uh, so there's gonna be a control wire channel A, channel B is gonna be my uh, feed wire, and uh, channel C will be will be will be my uh, Steelman listening device, and I got this cable hooked up to my channel C, so, uh, so, channel one, so that's ready to go. So let's see. What we got. Okay, 
So now I need a change on my channel B. I don't I don't have my attenuator right now. I'm just gonna go to uh, standard. So if I still have attenuated here, and on my channel C, I'm going to going to normal, just a standard. Then I'm gonna go to I don't know, maybe five volts. I'm sorry, guys. <clears throat> and uh, I will have now trigger from my channel A. Uh, so okay, let's find out. Scope is a little slow. Hmm. I don't know why it's not. my trigger on the wrong channel. Yeah, there's my trigger now. Here's. Sometimes. Okay. Uh, let's see the channel B. I'm going to turn that on. Okay, so here's my feed, and that is okay. Okay, so you can see I got no no voltage drop on my on my feed. You can see there's the uh, there's a slight slight voltage drop, but that's that's fine. So I'm not losing I'm not losing the uh, power to my injector. So. It's like, 300 millivolts, so I'm happy with that. So, okay. All right. So, and I can you can see the slope. I mean, this is I don't know. So let's turn on my microphone. Sorry guys, it's, it's what the heck? 
Yeah, I'll just go A C. Yeah. Sorry guys, it's taking too long. I just wanna Okay, there you go. So now we can see here when my injector is turning on and off. And there's no question that that is okay. There you go. It's my uh, on and off time. And uh, right here, this is when injector turns on, this one turns off. So, I mean, that's no, no, no question about the injector is firing. Sorry guys, my hands are so cold and I'm clicking this. Um, so, anyway, so this is the time the ignition, I mean the injector turns on, this is time it turns off. And this correspond with, uh, with, my, with, my, uh, with my time here and of course it's like, I don't know, like 20, 20 milliseconds. So, uh, I'm just going to put my my uh, microphone to, to another injector. So this is my this is my other injector. So this is actually number number four firing here and um, Right there. That's one. So we'll just actually gonna do. Uh, this is just to kind of get the amplitude of this of this injector. Okay. So I'm gonna leave these cursors here. I'm gonna go back to my to my number number six again. So the uh, the amplitude is a little bit smaller, but not much. Right there. It is so so much longer time of the when the injector is on. Okay, so uh, now you can see, guys, that my injector is working. It is turning on and off, even though I don't have a, uh, a spike on it. I think because it just takes so much longer to to a uh, Turn off, come on, turn off my, my circuit. Now the question is, you know, what is what is causing this? So so let's go ahead and uh, put a noise light on it and see if if we're gonna have still the same this this kind of a uh, slope here. Okay, I'm just gonna roll out my my injector. Okay, all right. Okay, I got my connector unplugged. I got my noise light plugged in. I'm just gonna start the car and see. You know, if you're gonna have, a, you know, what what we get get, I'm sorry, what we can get from from the uh, noise light. All right, we can see it works just fine. So there's a limitation. On the noise light and this kind of a testing, I mean, without the scope, I would never find this problem. And the shop that worked on this car, they checked injector pulse as well. They checked the, they replaced the injector, they checked injector pulse. They even on the wires, you know, from the injector to the PCM. They could never find a problem without the oscilloscope. It's just impossible. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to take the, feet, uh, the control wire again and I'm going to a uh, picoscope again. I just want to see that all, off time is it still around on the on the 
on the noise light as well. So I'm just going. I want to rule out my my injector is a problem. Even though, even though it's new injector, new doesn't mean it's, it's good. So let's do that. Okay. Well, I got my uh, lead hooked up to my control wire now again. Let's go back to scope and see if we're going to have the same problem. Okay, now I need to see here. It's going to be the same. And uh, we could see with injector unplugged, I still have the same the same problem. Still the same. So this should be nice, crisp on and off signal. There should be no. This should not be here. No reason to be there. And uh, still twenty something milliseconds. So. Yeah, there's a limitation on the noid light. This you would never see this. Okay, so the next, <clears throat> I have some injectors laying around from uh, from my uh, Chrysler. I'm gonna get these injectors. I'm just gonna plug them in. And, uh, these Chrysler injectors. I'm just gonna plug one in and uh, do the same thing. I'm gonna see if uh, if they act the same way. Okay, so right now I got my, uh, I just got a jumper wire between my my harness from my injector. It's hooked up to my, this one it has like a 10 ohms or 11 ohms. I can check the ohms on my injector here. I already done it, it's 12.5. I don't want to bore you guys with that, that's not a problem. So uh, let's just, uh, let's just do this real quick and we're pretty much actually set. I don't have to do anything right now. Keep rolling again. <clears throat> there you go, guys. The same problem. Firing injector, and it's not but no difference at all. So I can maybe put the current clamp around this since I have it hooked up. But that's for heck of let's put the current clamp on. Okay, I just got a current clamp on, and let's uh, have all that on the screen. Even though I mean now at this point, current clamp it's not going to give me much of information anyway but since we have it might as well do it so okay let's start it up now. Okay, and uh, that's a really weird looking current ramp. <laughs> I mean, it's just, uh, I mean, it's, look at the slope. I mean, this is correspond with, uh, with the turn off time. I mean, this is really weird looking stuff. Uh, I mean, but it's like one amp, 100 millivolts is one amp, but that's just really weird. My harness got unplugged, but anyway. Uh, 
this is like reverse current on this. <laughs> okay, so the camshaft sensors are okay. My circuit, you know, when it comes to my feed is fine. No voltage drop there. I could show you guys with my if I put my noise light on and if I crank the engine I will it will be the same I will never I've cranked it a couple of times with different tests with uh, with the noise light with this injector I will never have nice turn off time it's always slopes slowly slopes like that for some reason at this point my last test that I would, well, what I would do, I'm going to a PCM, I'm going to check the connector at the PCM, checking a power and ground at PCM, I don't think I need it, it doesn't make sense to me to, to do that. I will, uh, on my wire, from I'm going to leave this injector unplugged, I'm going to unplug the computer and I'm going to own my control wire to make sure that I have a short to ground, which I, I, I don't think I do, but I mean at this point, I'm leaning toward bad PCM, even, even though I have never seen the driver fail in this in this way. So, like this, whatever you're gonna say. So anyway, that will be my next thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys the PCM, and uh, I'm gonna unplug it all the way. I'm gonna take my ohm meter on my control wire, and if that doesn't show anything. Uh, What I could do, a friend of mine suggested maybe using a uh, the injector, uh, you know, activating tool, whatever, and uh, use it at the uh, control wire at the at the PCM, activate the injector, and just to confirm that that control wire is okay, which I, I can see, it, you know. So let's go. Okay, let's just stop talking. Let's go to a PCM. Let's see what we can find there, and um, then we'll, we'll see what we can do. Okay. Okay, guys, here's my PCM. This is my, let's see, this white and blue wire here on this connector. That's my injector number six. This way, right there. So um, let's uh, unplug it, this connector. And, you know, I'm thinking the reason I have a little bit of low compression, I think that's my cylinder washed down because this, this cylinder has been flooded with fuel. And uh, I'm not really worried about compression at this point at all. <clears throat> and, uh, let's see. The uh, connector it looks fine. I don't see anything wrong. I may do a uh, just to kind of drag just to get a pins and make sure that's okay but I think that's fine and uh, let's see if you can fill up the uh, pins at the connector at the computer. Sorry guys, yeah, that looks that looks good too and that would be actually like a third pin from the right I believe and that's everything's fine there. Set it below. I just cannot get my. Okay, that looks that looks okay. All right, so uh, let's get the. Uh, what I can do, I can back probe this. Okay, now I can, I can just leave. Hey, let's let's do. Uh, I'm sorry. Let's just on this wire real quick since I have it unplugged right now, and I got to unplug it the uh, computer. Let's on this wire. And make sure we don't have a short to ground. Okay, let's uh, get my ohm meter here. Now I can, I can disconnect my injector here. I don't need it anymore. Like this. And, uh, God, it's cold today. Put it on my ground. And, uh, See, you guys can see that. And I am just 
touching my my control wire. My PCM is unplugged, and uh, it's nothing. Oil. Okay, so it's nothing that's shorted on my on my control wire, which honestly did not, you know, I didn't expect to see that. Since I'm here, I'll just check the uh, resistance on my injector. Twelve point six ohms. Oh, sorry. Oh come on. Twelve point six. And I cannot keep my registry. Okay. Okay. So that's that's fine. Let me see here. Yeah, my my leads are messed up. So. Six. So, all right. So we can say. I mean, I know it. Um, there you go. So they were like twelve point five. Okay. So we can see the injector is fine. My control wire is okay. And uh, maybe the last thing I can do is connect this. Uh, uh, connect this harness again and get my this guy here connect this tool at my control wire at the PCM and activate this uh, injector again and uh, that would that would finish this and I will most likely call in a bad PCM this driver failed somehow. I honestly have no explanation how, but and why, other than maybe you know the injector that was previously in it. They, they, the guys that the shop they told the owner that they have found this injector being cracked a little bit. So um, and I, I don't know, but definitely there was you know there was something going on with this injector. They were trying to find out with annoying light, of course they could not, they could not get to any conclusion and uh, again being my, my compression, I can check the compression but with, uh, with so much fuel in it, I mean that's no need to do that, so uh, alright, so let me set everything up and uh, we're gonna activate the, this uh, injector and uh, let's see what happens, okay Okay, well this has been my final test. I got my, my injector tester hooked up to my battery. I'm only using the ground side. It's the ground side switched. I'm just uh, got everything plugged into my control wire at the uh, PC on the white and blue wire. Key is on. I got everything hooked up here. My injector and uh, I got my lead hooked up to my picoscope and uh, let's start it. I'm just going to activate it. And uh, there you go. I'm gonna stop this for a second. Okay. All right. So uh, we can see that now we have a you know on and off signal from my. Uh, it's kind of peaks only at 20 volts, but still, I mean, I have a you know my my on and off signal from my tool works fine, of course, but. Uh, uh, I, you know, the whole point is I got nothing wrong with my with my uh, control wire, so that's all all is fine. So uh, this is my final test. I am gonna call in a bad PCM. I might actually open it and see internally if something fail or not. And this is definitely is gonna be a part two. We're gonna order the PCM for this car, and uh, hopefully it'll be it'll be fixed. Okay guys, so well, throughout this test I am 100% confident that my power control module is a problem. I 
cannot see anything else causing this issue. If you guys can think of any other test that could be done, please let me know. I did order a uh, used PCM from eBay that's already pre-programmed for this VIN number. Should be here maybe in, uh, I would say maybe four or five days and uh, we'll upload the second video and uh, see if, it, if it's fixed or not. But I'm, I'm, there's absolutely nothing else that I can think of that could cause this, this problem. But the way the, the, this driver, this transistor inside this, on this circuit that it's acting up, I have never seen it before. It's a very unique, a very unique problem. I'm, I have watched uh, numerous videos on YouTube where we have a you know burned transistor or stuck stuck open or stuck closed injector. We have never seen that. We always see actually on and off signal no matter what. But I never seen this slope that takes place on this on this driver. So I don't know. So all right, well. Appreciate you guys watching and uh, see you in part two. See what happens, right? <laughs> okay, thank you. Bye-bye.